show how to. A lot of people tell me they've got a pasta machine sitting in the closet. They got it for a wedding. They tried it once, but they feel intimidated by making pasta. Anyone can make perfect pasta using a machine. Start off with about three quarters of a cup of all-purpose flour and then three quarters of a cup of zero zero flour imported from Italy. If you can get your hands on some zero zero, you'll find that it has a lovely, almost talcum powdery texture and it just makes a very smooth, easy to work with dough. Take your mound of, of flour and hollow out something in the center here that's almost like making yourself a little bowl you're gonna work in. What we're gonna do here today is a fairly eggy pasta. So for one and a half cups of flour all together, I'm using two eggs. And I'm just cracking them right in the middle. Now I'm gonna add a nice pinch of salt. I use a dash, just a very small amount of olive oil. It makes it a little bit easier to work with. You're gonna start scrambling your eggs. You can see my dough is coming together very nicely. I love to use this tool. This is a dough scraper. Everyone should have one. Just start working it in. And now it feels a little dry to me, so I'm going to add a little bit of water. This is a crucial question, how much liquid? What you're going for is just enough to have a nice soft dough, but not so soft that it's going to get sticking to your machine or your rolling pin. Now you just take the hands and you go in there and you pull it together. It's a little resistant. It's not like mush. It's got some body, and it just feels right. Again, you'll figure this out with practice. What you're doing when you're kneading is you're working up the glutens to make this wonderful stretchy quality so that you can have very thin, beautiful leaves of pasta. You really want to work into it. It takes about eight minutes of good kneading to work up the glutens. The feeling that you want, and what I'm really starting to feel now, is almost like baby skin. But if you work with it now, either on a rolling pin or in a machine, it will snap back at you. So you want it to rest. As much as I don't like plastic, it really keeps the moisture in. You can never leave pasta dough out. If it dries up, you'll have to throw it in the garbage. 20 minutes, put this aside, and it will be ready for your machine. So now we're at the point where we're really ready to turn dough into pasta. What I like about this machine is that it's got a motor. But you can also use the crank one, that's absolutely fine. Every pasta machine is going to have this little wheel, one way or another, that's going to move through the rollers, making the pasta thinner and thinner. We start always, always, always with number one. What you want to prevent right at the outset is sticking. You sprinkle it with a little flour. The first time I went through a couple times, but each successive time, just whip it through one time each setting. If you're an Italian nona, you know this all your life, you would never do what I'm about to do. But if you're a little bit of a geek or a nerd just learning, you can actually measure. This dough scraper, it has a little measurement on it. One sixteenth of an inch is the absolute maximum thickness that you want. So now I've taken my big strip of pasta and I've cut it into pieces about the length that I'd like a noodle to be. And what I'm going to do is make tagliatelle, which is simply cut noodles. Sprinkle some flour. You want to be able to unfurl this later. Roll it up like a cigar, and then just gently cut your noodles. And then we unfurl these. You're going to let this dry for at least a half hour. And then you're going to put it in rapidly boiling salted water for only a couple of minutes. If you're not going to eat it now, or if you want to even save some, you're not going to eat it all, what you can do is put this on a cookie sheet and stick it directly into your freezer. And once it's hard, gently take it off the cookie sheet, Put it in a plastic bag, get all the air out, and store it in your freezer for when you want to use it.